It's Real Estate Today with a Han team on 93.9 KPDQ. Oh, happy Friday. Hey, it's the final Friday before Christmas. Woohoo! Hi, Gloria. How are you? I'm great, Andy. Right there. That's Gloria Han. She's the queen of the Han team. You, you haven't, uh, you got all your shopping done? I'm done. Really? I didn't shop. I just send cards and money. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Well, it's money. Much easier. My grandkids love money. So they, it's always they the right size. Yep. It always fits. It's uh, the right color. They love that. Yep. I have eight of them, and that's too many to figure <laughs> out what they like. So the checks are in the mail. <laughs> they shouldn't know that, though. No. Not yet. Uh, if, are they listening to the show, do you think? No. Okay, good. <laughs> they're, not, they're not into real estate. It's all about real estate, buying it, selling it, and uh, doing stuff with it that, uh, that improves its value. And, and sometimes you talk about community things, as we did last week. But you brought mm-hmm. another guest this week. You want to introduce him real I quick? I do. This is Gary Christensen, president of Equality Appraisal LLC and a Portland, Oregon certified residential appraiser. So thank wow. you so much, Gary, for taking time to be here. It's a pretty official title there, Gary. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. My goodness. You're looking me up and down and appraising me right now. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. It looks disappointed. All right. <laughs> so uh, the original reason, oh, let's talk about something else first okay. before before we get into the original reason you started this program, which I think is so important and, and touches so many lives. Still, unfortunately, still does go like that. There's still some of them out there. Well, yeah, exactly. But, but, uh, but let's talk about, first off, the the fact that uh, you're not just an Oregonian anymore, although you live in Oregon, you you are able to uh, to do commerce uh, north of the border there. I am. I was just up in Vancouver this morning, so it's yes, I do have a Washington license now, so I can list sell real estate anywhere in Washington. Woohoo! Have you thought about uh, getting a license for Hawaii also, just so you can go over there, not necessarily to sell anything, but if you do that, then any trip you take to Hawaii is like deductible. Good idea, Andy. I'm not as dumb as I look. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a fun place to go. Yeah. I have friends that are over there right now enjoying the Christmas holidays, so. Melikalikimaka. Yeah, yeah, you too. <laughs> and uh, let's see, now let's talk about uh, your Facebook page, because that's a whole new venture that you, you launched recently, and, mm-hmm. and that, of course, is facebook.com slash Gloria Hahn Realtor. What kind, of, what kind of stuff you put over there on the Facebook page? Well, we put all, almost all of our listings on there as they come on, mm-hmm. um, and Rebecca, who takes care of our Facebook, that's a staff member here at the radio station, does a wonderful job of also updating it with things that apply to real estate, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. things to do to keep your house in good shape, to maintain your value, some fun things. Just making sure that uh, that is stuff that uh, is sort of like the show, only mm-hmm. in print form. In print form, yeah. I like that. Our show last uh, four shows are on there, so you can go on and listen to those shows if you've missed them. Nice. Or if you want to hear them again, they're all on there. Very easy to pull up. So take a look at it, like us on Facebook, and then you can see each day what we have posted new. Very cool. And, of course, that's a value to anybody that uh, is looking for a home. Or if Mm -hmm. you're selling a home, now your home is going to be posted in one more place. It's always good. It's always good. The more, the merrier. Yep. All right, then. So now let's get to that point of the the, the reason that uh, uh, Stan, God love him, and and you began the show to begin with is because of your heart for people who are just for whatever reason, not making it. People that uh, uh, aren't able to do their house payments anymore, and maybe they're facing eviction or, or foreclosure or or whatever's coming their way. Maybe, maybe they're nowhere near that mark, and that would be a good thing, and they don't even know it because, oh my goodness, you get all these papers in the mail, mm-hmm. and, and it's, it's written in legalese, and it sounds threatening, and you're already scared because you don't have enough money to, to pay the bills. You know that. You, so you don't yeah. like to be reminded of that. Well, I just met with another listener this morning that's in a similar position, but she got something in the mail and she thought it said that they were going to foreclose in 30 days, but it didn't say mm. that at all. Oh, my. But once you read through these things and wade through the paperwork, you can figure out where you're at. But if you don't do this every day like we do, it's very, very frightening when you get those kinds of things, especially this was from an attorney firm. So that also throws you into a tailspin really quickly. So. Yeah. We got that all worked out, but there are still people that are having trouble making their house payments, and it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. It just life happens to many of us, things that you had not expected. Maybe you lost your job. You got your hours cut back, your salary reduced during all of the economic downturn. 
perhaps you have an illness, an ill child, you've had a death in the family, a divorce. Sometimes you know? the bottom drops out and you find yourself in free fall. Absolutely. And yeah. none of us plan on those things. We all know they could happen, but we don't plan on them because we don't think they'll happen to us. They happen to everyone else. But when that happens to you, you need to just figure out what your next step is. There are options, there are plans, and that's my job is to help you wade through the paperwork and figure that out. I'll tell you what doesn't work is laying on the couch, watching television, and trying to drown your sorrows in Dr. Pepper and Doritos. That is not going to make the problem go away. It's going to make it worse because the more you ignore the banks, the more they accelerate things because they think you don't, either one, don't care, you don't have any way to fix things, so they just keep moving forward. And if you... Take a real stance that you want to find out what you can do. There are options. There are plans. We can sit down together. We can go through your paperwork, decide what your next step is. Our first um, step would be to try to get you a loan modification. That's what I'd like to see everybody be able to do so they don't have to leave their home. But sometimes your situation dictates that you don't have income enough to get a loan modification. So the bank has no other alternative than to proceed on to foreclosure unless you do something different. If we go through all the steps, you can't qualify for a loan modification, then we take a look at your value. Your next step, of course, would be a short sale if your home is worth less than what you still owe the banks. And if you have more than one mortgage, it's your first, your second, your third, however many mortgages you have against your property, we have to be able to clear all of those. If you cannot do that, then we put you into the position of a short sale, which means The bank has to approve whatever kind of sale we get, even though it doesn't pay them off. Can you do a short sale on something with a second or third mortgage? Yes. Really? Yes. I have one right now that has three mortgages. Wow. So uh, it's more difficult, but of course you owe more money than if you just had a first normally, and uh, it's more difficult. The second and thirds also have to agree to take less than what is owed. However, uh, it's not going to happen if you don't take some action. Exactly. So the first action is to give Gloria a call. What's that number, Gloria? 503-997-5745. Mm-hmm. 5745. 5745. I got it. Okay. So And they call you. Let's just roll. Hi, Gloria. I, I, you know what? Um, lost my job recently, and uh, I'm not able to make my house payments. What, what, what do I do? I don't even know what to do. The first thing I usually ask people when they call me with that kind of a, a sentence is, how far behind are you on your loan? Yeah. Because that makes a big difference. I've three, had people, three months, I'm 90 days out. What do I? Then you're okay. You're, oh. They haven't started foreclosure yet. They normally go four months before they start any kind of foreclosure proceedings. Many people can go much longer than that. I had someone tell me yesterday that they have a friend that hasn't made a mortgage payment in five years and they're <gasps> still in their home. So Really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that happens, but it's not an everyday thing, so don't plan on that. Right. But if you're only three or four months behind... Now is the time to take action. Give me a call. Let's look at the loan modification. If that's not going to work, let's look at the short sale. Or maybe you have equity in your home. I've had several people call me from the radio show, and they thought they were in short sale position. But after we valued their home out, we found that they do have equity now because the values have increased. And I'm sure Gary can tell us more about this, too, when we get to his segments, because our values have increased over the last year, year and a half. And so some of the people that felt they were way underwater are now have some equity or they're close. And if they get to that position where they're close, it makes the whole process much simpler. Hmm. Incidentally, if you're uh, in a house and you start this process, you're showing good faith to the bank and they're not going to boot you out. You stay in that home. You don't you don't want to pack up your stuff and say, you know, listen, I, I'll I'll go live someplace else while we sort this thing out or or you know, that's abandonment. That's abandonment. And yeah. it's I don't know why. I guess people just decide that they are scared. They don't know what to do. So they just leave. One yeah. of the people I talked to this week, she said, well, I'm just ready to pack up and move out. And I said, don't you pack a thing. Don't yeah. you move because that gives the bank a legal right to foreclose immediately upon your property. We don't want them to do that. You may have equity. You may not have equity, but you may still have a year to live in your house and not make a payment. You might be able to live in that house for the five years. Five years. Of, yeah. I yeah. mean, that can happen and, and does happen occasionally. And even if you get to the point where it goes to foreclosure sale, which um, if you call me, we're going to walk you through everything to stop that and to avoid that. But even if in the worst scenario that happens, you still have a lot of time once it's so the sale happens. So don't leave your home. Please stay in your home. Call me. You bet. And uh, not only stay in your home, but uh, know this. 
Gloria is not the only person that's offering to help you. There are other people who are making offers to help you, uh, but they're not exactly on the up and up. That's very true. And I've had so many people over the last few months tell me that they were contacted by this type of person. Mm. Uh, they promised they would help them. And they talk really good because I, I had one call me and I went along with his story just so I could see what the plan was like. And he was very, very, um, it sounded very good. Friendly, he, helpful, slick. Even better than slick, just really nice, sounding like he really was there to help you. He's professional. All, he, he wants to help. Yeah, and that's his job, and that's why he's here for him. All you have to do is send me $6,000, and we can get started. Oh! Well, if I was four or five months or two or three years behind on my mortgage, where am I going to get $6,000 well, to send not, him? Not a problem, because uh, I've got a Nigerian prince who's about to send me some money. Exactly. Yeah. I have some of those, too, yeah. but... Um, so please, please don't pay anyone up front. There is absolutely no reason to pay them. They're not going to help you. The only thing they're going to help you with is relieving you of that $6,000. Well, and I made a silly comment there that kind of took you off track of what you're really saying is $6,000. Okay. Oh, this is going to get me out of the hole. Mm -hmm. Mom, dad, can you help me or cousins or who, you know, wherever they're going to get this, uh, you know, short term loan from somebody else, family, friends, uh, wherever it I've is. I've had people take money off of credit cards, run oh. their credit cards up to the max so they could get that money to put in the mail because they know this is going to save their home. Oh my! And goodness. that breaks my heart yeah. that anybody could be that ruthless, first of all. But it just, just tells me how sad and how desperate people get. And sure. that's what really hurts, is if you in that situation, please call me. I charge you absolutely not one cent. I'll help you all the way through the process, so don't pay anyone up front. If please. you're grasping at straws, instead grasp for the phone. Call Gloria at uh, 503-997-5745. Or you can actually call us here on the air, and we can uh, begin the process of talking about your case. If you have specific questions, uh, you can ask. And, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Gloria is, the, like I say, the queen of the haunt team, uh, knows what's going on here. 503-786-9390 is our number, and that's going to be uh, useful here in a little bit as well as we... Uh, I'm sure people are going to have questions about appraisals for their home as we oh, yeah. talk about that. Now, whenever you go in and you, you assess the value of the home, you're not necessarily doing an appraisal yourself. You're sort of giving it an eyeball, right? It's we call a... it a comparative market analysis. Oh. And it, we pull up comps. We look usually go by the property first, look at it. And I like to look at it inside and outside before mm -hmm. I do a CMA. And we pull up comps, and we have a computer program on our RMLS website that we can plug all this in. But it is not an official appraisal. It cannot be used for a lender, cannot be used for any legal purposes. So that's why Gary and appraisers like Gary are very important, because there is a place in our business and in the whole process of buying a home that an appraiser has a lot to say about what happens. Man, there's some smoke and mirrors and alchemy going on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to getting into the nuts and bolts of that. Well, and I think that we, Gary and I talked to the, out in the lobby that there are, I think a lot of people don't really understand the appraisal process. And so that's one reason I was really happy that he agreed to be here today because we need to make it understandable for the buyers and sellers so that they aren't in the gray area, that they just don't understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So. Makes perfect sense. All right, so Gary Christensen is going to be joining us. He's the president of A Quality Appraisal LLC. Wow, licensed legal <laughs> company, something rather. Anyway, the program is Real Estate Today with the Han Team. Our number again, 503-786-9390. Thank you so much for listening. We do it every Friday from 2 till 3 o'clock. It's 93.9 KPDQ. Well, welcome back. Not that you went anywhere. We did. All right. It's 93.9 KPDQ. The program is Real Estate Today with the Han Team. And uh, here we go. It's a Friday. Uh, it's going to be a nice weekend. Well, actually, no. It's, no, it's, it's going to be raining. And look at those clouds are rolling in right now. Is so. that them encroaching on us here? Yeah, because it was beautiful blue skies all day. But now they're rolling in. They're saying it's going to rain a lot oh this weekend. Now, you should know that. You're the weatherman, aren't I, you? Uh, not anymore. I used to. I was a weatherman in L.A. Oh. Uh, here, I'm like, traffic. whatever, I don't know. You're traffic, man. I hear you doing traffic. <laughs> That's right. I do traffic. <laughs> I'm all about the, the weather on the road. Um, so you, you brought in your friend Gary Christensen. You want to reintroduce him and, uh, and refresh all that? Sure. Gary Christensen, president of A Quality Appraisal, LLC, and he's a Portland, Oregon certified residential appraiser. So thanks again, Gary, for being here. 
Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been an appraiser, and how you got into appraising? Um, I'd love to. Uh, first of all, thank you, Gloria and Andy, for having me. I'm honored to be here. Um, now he's been had. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I got into appraising because I kind of enjoyed writing and statistics in college. And um, my wife and I, we bought our first home and quickly bought another home. And we kind of got excited about real estate, especially me. I have four cousins who are appraisers, and so there was kind of a family connection there. Oh, wow. And uh, so about nine years ago, I took an apprenticeship position with one of my cousins who has his own company that's a uh, commercial and residential appraisal company in Oregon and Washington. We service 26 counties, and I got a really good foundation of experience kind of doing a little bit of everything, Oregon and Washington, commercial, residential. But then I started my own company, uh, focused in on residential about five years ago. I have two appraisers in my office, an assistant, and we have a we have an office person who kind of helps things in the background. And uh, we just focus on Portland's Tri-County area and Clark County in Washington for residential only. So you do Washington then? Yes. Yes, I do. Right. Okay. So you, you mentioned 26 counties. That was with uh, your cousin's company. but That's now, correct. Yeah, now you focus more on the metro. Yep. Okay. Yep, exactly. Do you get out to some of the rural areas also? Do some of Yes. That? Yes, uh, we do a lot of uh, Sandy, Malala, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Does that uh, change uh, things drastically? Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's more challenging. There's not many appraisers that really want to service those areas, so um, uh, we enjoy getting out there, and uh, it, it's just it's just a little bit more of a puzzle to to value those properties. I would think so. Yeah. What's the What's the oldest place you've appraised? Wow. Um, that's a good question. I, it would probably be maybe 1890 or you know something like that. But I I I don't know. Some I've I've appraised some old houses that we didn't know the the date. And if there's anybody that happens to listen to this show from the East Coast, they're going, "What 1890? That's not very <laughs> it's old." It's like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, the old houses are that age. But... We got mobile homes that old. What? <laughs> so 1890, the construction techniques and everything must have been completely different. So you're looking at. It, you you really have to know your history as well. Yeah, yeah, it definitely helps to understand kind of the the history of the area and and yeah. and and a little bit of about a little bit about construction as well and how it's changed and how you'd have to retrofit or update a house over the years to to keep it valuable and marketable. Yeah, well, that's a fascinating line of work. I can't. <laughs> and and people are so are they anxious to see you? Are they a little nervous about it? Or are they like uh, do they they follow you around and try to influence you? How's that work? Um, yeah, a lot of everything you just said. And, and actually, <laughs> the the following an appraiser around, I I personally, I, I know some appraisers want their space, I think, but I personally, I, if somebody wants to follow me around, I'd love it because it's a great opportunity to chat with the homeowner and really learn the property. Mm. See, now that's the way I looked at it also, but I was yeah. always warned by my real estate professionals, uh, my, my realtors, to tell them, you know, stay out of his way, stay away from him, you'll, you'll negatively influence the value of the house. <laughs> and I don't know if that was true or they were just feeding me a line to, you know, make me... Go get a burger or something. Well, I think we've found a lot of appraisers don't want the homeowner even to be there. So it's nice if you <clears throat> like having them there, Gary, because I think it's a good learning experience even for the seller because then yeah. they understand more how we establish a value. We don't just pull numbers out of the sky and say your house is worth this. There's a basis for it. So Absolutely. I think that's Absolutely. That is very important. And that, and to add to that point, um, I actually won't go to a house unless the owner is there. It just limits my liability as an as an appraiser. If it's occupied, I want the owner there. If it's vacant, then and and I can get in with an MLS key. You know that's okay. But uh, but if if it's occupied, I want I want the owner there, and I want to learn everything I can about the property from them. That's great. When I was a kid, there was a, a family lived near me, a friend of mine, uh, and they they made a lot of curry, and so the house had this really. <laughs> Strange smell. I mean, it was it was a funky smell. It was bad. And, uh, appraisers and, but, have smelled everything. But <laughs> does that affect the value of a home if there's a scent? Yes, yes, it can. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's, so pets, it's, that kind of thing. Yes, it's all about the marketability of a home. And if buyers come in and and the house stinks, it you know it's it comes down to um, if it's something that's unattractive. What's it you know what's it going to cost to get rid of the problem, or what does it cost to entice a buyer to live with it? Uh, and okay. can you really get rid of the problem? There are yep. some odors you'd never get rid of. Yeah. Well, I suppose if you it maybe you change your carpet, your pad, uh, repaint. 
Uh, bulldoze yeah. the place, start fresh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that will most, in most cases, that will get rid of the scent. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the worst one, I think, is uh, to someone that smoked heavily in the house. Oh, that had you go in and the windows are brown and the smell is just, you, I don't know if you ever really do get rid of it because it soaks into the walls and it soaks into the ceiling yeah. and in the floors yeah. and... Well, let, let's say somebody did that. They smoked, uh, you know, so there's nicotine on the windows and that kind of thing, and and you, mm-hmm. it, the, the smell is permeating the, the premises. Uh, is there, if, if they're able to mitigate that somehow, get rid of it, um, can they call you back? Would would you come back and, and, and up the ante a little bit there? Uh, quite possibly. Yeah. yeah. Does that happen? Uh, it has never happened in, in my in my practice, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing hypothetical curveballs. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> So what is the job of an appraiser, Gary? Um, well, it, it's to provide an independent and unbiased opinion of value. And and it's as simple as that. Uh, it's usually market value. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people, uh, there's other types of value, value and use, quick sale values. But most of the time for banks and things, it's, it's market value. Uh, and appraisal, it's important to know that an appraisal is a process. It's not a report. It's not the paper that you hand to somebody, here's an appraisal. It's, it's a process of coming to an opinion of value. And it involves interviews, research, analysis, and three approaches to value. And like you said earlier, you said you used to be a weatherman. You know, appraisers are like weathermen for the real estate market. We make predictions about, uh-huh. about what, the, what the real estate market is doing and, what it, you know, and how it would influence a particular property. That's all we do. Well, you mentioned at the very beginning that you said independent and uh, what was Un- it? Independent and unbiased. Yeah. Now, does that mean that there are certain people you can't work with because of that, like relatives? Yes. Or- um, now, uh, appraisers are highly regulated by the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice, oh. and it's called USPAP. Um, and, uh, you know, appraisers have to decline a job if they if they believe they cannot be impartial and objective and uh you know if they do have some sort of relation to that property they at least need to disclose it in the report so everybody knows um but uh you know most of the time I, for me I'll, I'll decline anything where i have any sort of family connection or, or something like that well it never occurred to me that uh I mean, an appraiser who appraises your house. It's like the, the <laughs> it's like the barber. Where does he go to get his haircut? You know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right. A dentist. He can't pull his own teeth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How do you receive your assignments, Gary? I think this is something new or relatively new. And I, I think this is very confusing to sellers as to who who appoints you or who asks you to do the job? Oh, great question. Uh, because it used to be that we could just call up an appraiser and say, hey, we're doing this loan. Could you just come over and appraise it? You, you can't do that? It doesn't that work that way anymore. Oh, no mm. kidding. I wonder why. Right. Well, in my practice, I, I focus primarily on non-lender work. I, I do very little lender work. But um, in, in when it comes to lender work... Um, what do you mean by that, lender work? Uh, for banks. Okay. Okay. Right. And and they're they're all regulated... Um, and the banks have, there's been regulations put in place that separate the bank and the people who are making money from the loan from the appraiser. And they've, they've separated them using usually a management company. They call them AMCs, appraisal management companies. Um, and they also, or some banks actually set up their own departments within the bank that have to order the appraisals. And these are people that do not have a commission or any kind of relation to the sale. So they're not calling up the appraiser and saying, hey, I need this number. Can you get it for me? I really, and if you can, I'll get you lots of business in the future because that was something that happened an awful lot prior to the last uh, financial collapse. And, you know, they, they've tried really hard to eliminate it, and they've done, I think, a pretty good job of eliminating it. But in the process, there's other problems, and, and appraisers still get that pressure from other sources. So it's a little too buddy-buddy. I understand that. Who polices you? Who, who, who keeps an eye looking over your shoulder and making sure you're doing things right? The state regulators. Okay. They, um, they come yeah, around and certify uh, you? or Yep. Uh, they'll take your license away if, oh. if, or fine you if, uh, if you're not doing your job. And it's uh, in Oregon. It's the ACLB the appraisal certification and licensure board. Okay. And you have to be licensed in every state that you work in. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So if you don't work very much with lenders, <clears throat> what other types of appraisals are there, Gary? Um, 
estates, divorces, tax appeals, trusts, right. bankruptcies, foreclosures, condemnation, litigation. Well, you mentioned divorce, and that they're not necessarily selling the house, but they need to determine a fair market value so that they can divide the assets uh, yep. equitably. Yep. Yeah. Yep. How about that? I, I, this is a whole new world to me. <laughs> Things have value. <laughs> so a homeowner could call you for any of those reasons? Just call you directly? Yep. yep. They call me directly. And, you know, that's why I work so hard to have a, a good website and so people can can find me online and, and give me a call. Yeah. Well, you do have a great website. I spent quite a bit of time on it. As you can see, I printed out a lot of things from it. <laughs> but it's very informative. It's easy to navigate through. So you've done a, a really good job, and I'm sure it brings you some business. Yes. So what is a market value? Um, well, there's there's many types of market value, or many types of value. Market is one of them, as we, as we mentioned. Um, and it's not just a willing buyer and a willing seller. Uh, Fannie Mae's definition of market value is the most common that uh, that appraisers go by for for all your lending purposes, and it's really the most probable sales price within a normal marketing time for cash equivalent. Um, and the buyers and sellers need to be well informed. That's where you come in, Gloria, <laughs> and typically motivated, not distressed. So, like your short sales, those would not be market value indicators right. or very good market value indicators. Um, and agent commissions are included in that value. So the key isn't a willing buyer and willing seller. People pay too much all the time. Market True. value is the most probable price. So it's not skewed by emotion, that kind of thing. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. That's good to know. All right, this is uh, Gary Christensen. He's the president of Equality Appraisal. What, what's your website address? That's www.aqualityappraisal.com. <laughs> that made it pretty easy. That was well, easy. Look at that. Our <laughs> telephone number is 503-786-9390. Gary's going to join us for the second half hour of Real Estate Today with the Han Team on KPDQ. It's Real Estate Today with the Han Team on 93.9 KPDQ. Our telephone number, you have questions uh, regarding buying or selling real estate, or today uh, we're lucky to have uh, uh, this uh, uh, president of a quality appraisal. It's uh, Gary Christensen, appraiser extraordinaire, a certified <laughs> uh, residential appraiser. He's appraising me right now. And uh, doing okay? Am I doing all right? <laughs> Your value's going down. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but my stock is up. and I have everybody... <laughs> All right. You know what? One of the things I like to do, and I've, I've uh, purchased and uh, sold a couple of different homes, uh, three, whatever. Um, and, and one of the things, the, the cool tools that are available to us these days is we go online, and I think everybody is, has looked at Zillow.com and wanted to see, you know, what's my neighbor's house? What's my house worth? Oh, what's my cousin's house worth? Is that of any value? Is Zillow, like, accurate? Is it pretty good? Can you, can you, is it ballpark anyway? What, what is Zillow all about? Well, uh, Zillow is an AVM. That's an automated valuation model, and um, it's a calculation. It's not an appraisal, so it's different. Appraisal requires judgment from an appraiser, um, and the model doesn't know a lot of things about your property that an appraiser can know. View, condition, quality, oh, yeah. things like that. Watershed, all that. Um, exactly. But, uh, and, and Zillow is really more of a toy. It's not that accurate. As far as, uh, in, especially in Portland, if you go to Zillow, you can go to the Zillow report card right on the website, and it'll tell you how accurate it is. And in Portland, it's more than 10% off 30% huh. of the time. Oh, wow. So, you know, there, that's, your, that's your odds of getting, getting it right. I think if, if you live in a subdivision where all the houses are very similar and there's lots of sales activity in that subdivision, maybe they're newer houses, so they, they don't vary in condition very much. They really only vary in size. Zillow might give you a, a reasonable indicator, but I really wouldn't put any stock in it if I have to make some some important decisions. So it's sort of a, it's a, it's a ballpark thing, and if you're using it for purposes like to see if you're doing better than your cousin, Sure. <laughs> it's not yeah. so bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great but idea. It, it's a very frustrating tool when we get into a, go in for a listing appointment and someone plops it down on the table in front of you and says, "My house is worth three hundred thousand on Zillow, and really maybe it's worth two fifty and oh. it's a very, very difficult thing to get them to change their mind or it might be worth three twenty five could be depending on yeah, yeah they, maybe they've done improvements that yeah. Zillow didn't take into account very true, but I think more than than not, I think it's usually high. Does that seem right, Gary or well uh it, just from my Curiosity every once in a while, I'll get done with an appraisal and I'll go over and click on Zillow. Zillow it also. <laughs> um, 
I don't do I this that. on a regular basis, but oh, I have oh, done no. it. I've quite heard a bit. it's been done, uh, <laughs> and it's just wildly inaccurate. <laughs> oh wow! And there's ser- there's several of those kinds or, of. Or things. I'm or I'm wildly inaccurate. Well, we're pretty so, sure you're good. But at least you have credentials <laughs> and comps to support your. Yep. Yep. Do and, you do you go by and look at every house you do an appraisal on? Um. I mean, like a drive by. On each one, or do you... well, we don't have to as appraisers. We don't have to view in a property to appraise it. Really? Oh, I'm yep. surprised by that. I thought, I thought you had to walk the thing with well, a clipboard. If and... if you're doing a uh, a loan for a bank, typically they're going to re- require if you don't if if you're doing a typical eighty uh, percent loan on on a property, they're mm-hmm. going to require a full appraisal where we go view the interior and exterior of the property and mm-hmm. we drive by all the comparables. But appraisers can do lesser scopes of work depending on the intended use and the use of the client it all comes down to is the use is is what we're doing as professionals going to create credible results for our intended user interesting that's fascinating i had no idea so if you if you just want to know the value of your house so you can brag to your cousin i could do a much lesser scope appraisal that would suit those purposes and would also uh, fill all of my requirements by the regulators for uh, second uh, mortgages, that kind of thing. Do they require? Um, they yeah. Oftentimes, banks will have uh, appraisers do desktop appraisals or even just a desktop review of somebody else's appraisal. Oh, so you're checking other people's work to yep. make sure that they're accurate and yep, and exactly in the ballpark. And, and that's one of the things that separates appraisals from other things is we're peer reviewed. We get you know percentage of our work. Um, depending on if it's with a bank or what, whatever, it has to be able to be peer reviewed. If the state says we want to look at one of your files, we have to pack it up and send it on down. And do you, you do things besides residential? You do commercial properties as well. Um, I am not licensed to do commercial properties. When I worked for a commercial appraisal company, we did both, and I was an assistant. Ah, okay, all right. But that would be a whole different uh, bag of tricks, wouldn't it? Uh, it's all the same. It's all the same uh, process. Um, it's but when you do commercial, you're looking much more at the income of a property mm. rather than um, uh, with residential. There's lots of sales comparable data uh, to go by. Whereas you know an investor who's going to buy a commercial building is, is really just looking at how much money is this property going to make me over this amount of time that I'm going to hold it, and how much is it going to cost me to maintain it. That's, those are great questions. How can a homeowner increase the appraised value of their home? Is there any way they can do that? Oh, uh, certainly. I uh, I always say to I always say to people, keep up with the Joneses, but don't surpass them. Oh, um, there's a there's a uh, rule in in appraisal call or a principle. It's called the principle of conformity, and it and it basically says that value is maximized when properties blend. You're going to get the most return on your investments. Um, so my, you know, you want to be like your neighbors, but don't be the biggest house on the street. Don't, you know, add on to your house and make it bigger than all your neighbors. And don't, um, don't put a whole bunch of really fancy travertine floors and all kinds of things in your house. If your neighbors don't have vinyl floors and things like that, you know, the, the market has to, you're not going to get the return on investment. And it's, you know, a lot of people think that from watching shows like, you know, flip that house and extreme mm. makeover. Mm. They think they're going to put these fancy finishes on everything and, and get big returns. And, and it's for most of the, most of the time, it's not true unless your property, unless there's some sort of uh, something going on in the market that, that makes the, uh, an extreme demand for that. Well, gentrification of a neighborhood, that kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, so you don't want to over improve for the yeah. neighborhood. So my, my list for homeowners for most houses is, uh, is do the little things that that will do the do the lowest cost items that that add value and it's and it's good on most properties carpet and paint maintenance you had a great show a couple of weeks ago on maintaining your home take care of all those little maintenance items when it comes time for your house to sell if uh, if you've got little repairs those are all leverage for the buyers to get that price down and I'm sure you've You've had that happen after you you contract. They come back and and they want you to do all kinds of things. Uh, take care of the fixtures, lights, uh, yeah, light fixtures, handles, knobs, faucets. Those are low cost ways to make your house look more modern. And uh, clean up the yard, remove the clutter, mow and trim. 
that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, keep it small. If you want to go big, get some professional advice. If it's, uh, we kind of uh, hinted around this question before uh, and didn't really get to the heart of it, but um, is it a, a service that you provide that you will come give a kind of a cursory look at it and a list of here's some things you could do so people could do that and then you come back and give the full appraisal? Yeah, yeah. I I also do just, just the smaller and uh, and give some advice. Oh, okay. Well, that's <laughs> this is fantastic to know. I had no idea. I thought the appraisal was the appraisal, and boy, you're, you know, here it comes. I get hired to do lots of appraisal consulting, and an appraisal may or may not be part of that assignment. Hmm. So I could give advice based on some market statistics or, or data that I found. Mm -hmm. That's a good service because there are a lot of people, when they get ready to put their home on the market, because I'm one that I'm still on the soapbox about pre-listing inspections, but I can't seem to get anybody to get really excited about that. But I think that's a tool that should be utilized. Oh, but, yeah. But most sellers don't want to pay the two or $300 to get that done, but it would save so much, just like you said, leveraging when you get down to the repairs. If they'd gone through and done these few little things that the buyer's going to see, there may be $500 worth of repairs, but the buy buyer's going to want $2,000 off the yeah. price. And people don't want to do that. That surprises me because, I mean, if you have an opportunity, I mean, if I'm looking at homes, and I see this one is, you know, has had a pre-appraisal, that, that's going to, you know, sway me that direction. Well, and I've, I've encouraged sellers recently to do, to do appraisals before they list because, yeah. you know, we do the comps, we get as close as we can, but we're still not giving them the figure that the... When we get a sale, what, what, <laughs> good, Andy, at least you did that once too. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's in the car, so it can't ring. Um, but it's good to know what, to, once we get a sale, what that value is really going to be. And I think it's worth it for those pre-listing appraisals. Um, it's a very small amount of money in relation to the amount of money that you're selling your property for. And, um... And it's a second, you know, if you've already got an opinion from your real estate agent, great. Get an opinion from an appraiser. You put the two together. Neither one is perfect. And you make the best decision based on real data and, and, and good advice. It's really important in our business, I think, to hit a good price. If we could, if we had a way to know that perfect price, houses would sell in two or three days. Hmm. Because there is a perfect price point for every property. And a lot of times if the seller wants to come in way above that price point, we sit there for a while yep, and this, that damages your value. The market right now is strong. Inventory is low, but it's still price sensitive. If, right. if you're not priced right, you're not going to sell. All right. So this is uh, Gary Christensen. He's the president of a quality, a quality appraisal. Well, did you put that A there first so it would be first in the phone book? <laughs> no, because uh, quality appraisal was already taken. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice and simple. Aqualityappraisal.com. You can find them online and find us at 503-786-9390. Back with one more segment on Real Estate Today with the Han Team next on KPDQ. Howdy. It's Real Estate Today with the Han Team on KPDQ. Our number, 503-786-9390. And today, uh, talking about appraising your house with the uh, president of A Quality Appraisal, it's Gary Christensen. Well, Gary, we only have about 12 minutes left, so we want to make sure we hit everything that you feel is important. Um, what should homeowners, homeowners avoid when they're working with appraisers? Are there any key items you want to hit on that? Um, yes, uh, the big one. Um, I need this value, or do you think my house <laughs> is worth this? Um, oh, putting ideas in your head? Yep. Oh. Appraisers, you should definitely avoid that when working with an appraiser. Uh, appraisers, due to uh, regulations, they they can't talk. Be, if, if this is for lending purposes, the appraiser is not going to be able to talk about the value of your home uh, right there when they're on the inspection. And they don't know it at that time either. There's a, Most of the work happens in the office, away from the inspection. So, you know, don't ask them that. Some appraisers are going to be offended. And um, for me personally, if somebody tells me, my house, I need $250,000 to make this loan work, and then I get back into the office and I'm doing my process and I look at the indicators and they're telling me $250,000, I'm actually going to feel a little uncomfortable about the value coming in at $250,000 because now, if this if this file ever becomes uh, you know investigated because of some complaint, and it goes to the state, and they see that the homeowner had told me they thought 
they needed 250 and I came in at 250. Now I'm, I look like maybe I did that just because they said it. So don't say it. Cause I, I really... <laughs> well, and, and even beyond that, yeah, if let's say he comes in and say 245, 248, you know, just under that, you're like, oh, yeah, do I fudge it a little bit? And yeah. Now it becomes an ethical issue. Yep, yeah. exactly. It's better. I, sometimes I, you know, stick my fingers in my ear when I know they're about to say it. Say la la la. <laughs> I don't want, I can't hear you. <laughs> well, what happens if an appraisal comes in low, Gary, what are the options for the homeowner? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up because that is a pretty traumatic thing for homeowners when, you know, so much is riding on your appraisal. Sure. I mean, that loan falls through or their house sale falls through or they got to renegotiate the price. Oh, it's just horrible. And appraisers don't want that to happen. But, you know, it's kind of we're we are, like I said earlier, we're the weathermen. We sometimes we the, the weather's bad and we have to say what it <laughs> says. And um, so. What they should do is ask for a copy of the report mm -hmm. and read it. Does it, everything seem reasonable? Um, low value does not mean that the report is not credible and not and not correct. Um, so they need to read it and see if they, you know, an appraisal report is an argument in favor of a value opinion. And if they read it and they come to the same conclusion when they get to the end and say, yeah, the appraiser is right, well, then that... That's credible. And and there's more on my website about how to tell if if an appraisal is credible. We cause we could talk I mean, that's really that takes years to, to, to learn. But you know, if if you decide it's not credible, then you ask the bank for a reconsideration of value process. They all have a formal process. It's usually a form. Don't write a book, don't suggest a value, you know, provide evidence that of the things that would be wrong. Um, you know, the, your evidence might include some different comparable sales that you know something about, something special about. And um, uh, you may know that you may, the best way to, to dispute an appraisal and win is is to find errors in the appraisal report itself. So, you know, make sure the appraiser got all the, all the features of your property right. You know, there may be something that you should have told them about and they didn't even have any idea that your property had you know, a gold mine underneath it or something. <laughs> <laughs> Does that happen a lot, Gary? <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it could happen. How do you make adjustments to an appraiser, to an appraisal? Um, well, uh, just like with, with an appraisal itself, coming up with an opinion of value for the property, there's, there's three approaches to value. There's the cost, the income, and the sales comparison approach. So when we're when we're looking at comparables, we say we have a comparable that's very similar to our property, but it's smaller in square footage, then we're going to adjust that comparable upward. Its sales price will now become an adjusted indicator of value for the subject. So we're going to up or adjust that upward to um, to accommodate that additional square footage. And those those adjustments can all be made using the three approaches to value. Um, and there's many different techniques within that. Uh, appraisers most often talk about paired sales and statistics are becoming more accepted in appraisal and they're also becoming expected. So the, you know, the real cardinal sin of appraising is don't, you, you make some sort of adjustment without a support for it. You have to have, you have to make adjustments with the best available evidence. How long is an appraisal good? Um, well, appraisal is good on that moment. So if I inspect... <laughs> <laughs> Expires by 5 o'clock. No, it's yeah. worse than that. Oh, wow. So if I leave your property at uh, 425 and it burns down at 426, <laughs> you know, my well, value was for 425. So, yeah. no, we really, we, we say one day on the appraisal report, but that's just it. It's, it's good for one day. Now, banks will oftentimes say, oh, a certain bank will accept an appraisal or use that appraisal for maybe 30 days or mm. 60 days or 90 days, depending mm. on the market conditions and their, their underwriting guidelines. But uh, from my standpoint, it's really only good for that moment. And also, I'd like to add, if you're getting an appraisal for listing your property, you know, you want to get it as close to that time when you're going to list your property. Because if a new listing comes on the market um, or some new, comp new competition for your property come on the market, that um, that's going to have a big impact on the value of your property because you're now going to have to compete with these other two. Or you know. can you get an update on an on an estimate like that yes. quick, quickly and easily based on the old estimate and say, well, it's been 
three months, something like that, yes. and, say, yeah, and just build on it? Yes, appraisers. That's something appraisers do routinely is do appraisal updates, and they'll go back and revisit anything that's changed since the last last time. And it, an appraisal update is an appraisal. It is treated by the state regulators as another appraisal. So appraisers still have to go back and 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 do all of the things that they're required and hmm. keep a work file for it. Make sure and, there's no meth lab in the basement. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and uh, Are there set fees for appraisals? Like if someone wants to have you come out and do just a pre-listing appraisal, do you have a set fee for that? Or um, I personally, I, I know a lot of my appraisal competition out there, they – they will they they have some prices listed based on like the form the type of appraisal report but for me really it comes down to how much data is available and how much work is this appraisal going to take and so i price i price based on the property if it's a you know a ranch in a subdivision and, and there's lots of sales available that might be a lower priced appraisal but most appraisals in the portland area for a residential home a full appraisal that includes an interior inspection you know, somebody should be expecting to pay somewhere between four hundred and five hundred dollars for those appraisals. Are all appraisers the same? Oh, <laughs> definitely not. Um, in in all professions, there's you know there's some people who are stronger than others, and um, and so if you're hiring an appraiser, it's a good idea to you know hire a, a good appraiser because those, like we said before, I mean, there's a lot riding on that appraisal value. Uh, so experience with the area and the property type, I think that's really important. Do they belong to and are they designated within professional organizations? I think that's really important. Less than half of all appraisers belong to some sort of professional organization. Um, I belong to the NAIFA and uh, the Appraisal Institute. I'm on the board of directors for the local NAIFA. So, um, and, you know, appraisers who are involved hold themselves to higher standards, and are engaged with the profession. So another indicator you might look at is that how far did the appraiser come you know, from their office. If they're two hours away when they come to appraise mm -hmm. your property, you might want to go back and look at what is their experience in that area. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to be a good appraiser or a really experienced appraiser for your property, but uh, you, know, you raise an eyebrow. I used to do appraisals in Waukiacum County, in Washington, I don't know if you know the area, but I drove an hour and 45 minutes there. I went there every week, and I would look at several properties, and I was appraising more properties than anybody else <laughs> in that county. And uh, I was very qualified, but I was driving an hour and 45 minutes. So just because of the distance, it doesn't necessarily mean they're not good. And... Well, we're almost out of time, Gary. Is there anything else that you really want our listeners to know? We have uh, about one minute. All right. Well, just remember that an appraiser's opinion is just that. It's an opinion. It's an independent, unbiased opinion of value. Uh, people or banks should use appraisals to make inf uh, informed decisions about things that most of us, uh, that for most of us are our biggest assets. Uh, so, you know, pick an appraiser carefully and, uh, and use them when you need them. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always call me. My phone call, you know, it's always free to call and I personally answer my phone and the calls are free. It's 503-781-5646 to get a hold of Gary, Gary Christensen from AQualityAppraisal.com. And you can get a hold of him on the web as well. Glor we we oh. need to say Merry Christmas. We Merry will be back yes. before Christmas. So That's Merry right. Christmas, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for listening to Real Estate Today from 2 till 3 on 93.9 KPDQ.